to Ministry of Defence. The show that's like the first stage of the Tory leadership contest. All we want is for 20 people to admit they like us. <laughs> I'm your host, Stephen Allen, and I'm going to start with a quick recap of the news you might have missed. In Tory leadership news, it's been a frenzied week of candidates denying that they're pandering to populism, whilst promising unaffordable tax cuts and promising to have the Whitecliffs of Dover carved into giant mooning buttocks. <laughs> I phoned up Conservative Central Office and asked about the odds, and they said Michael Gove and Jacob Rees-Mogg weren't running. <laughs> of course, do please bear in mind, viewers, that at the time this show was recorded, this was already boring me to <laughs> <laughs> Rishi Sunak has been the most reluctant to offer tax cuts, presumably because they'll make no difference to his wife's income. <laughs> Liz Truss launched her campaign to become Prime Minister by not being able to find a way out of the room after her speech. Uh, mind you, Boris doesn't seem to be able to find the door even when he's shown it. <laughs> Penny Mordaunt is a Navy reservist and that could help her feel comfortable with Conservative High Command, as submarine training means she can surely handle a great many old farts. <laughs> Tiny Formula One boss Bernie Eccleston is in trouble for not declaring assets of 400 million. Tax officials don't know exactly where these assets are, but I think we can safely assume none are on a high shelf. <laughs> Why wouldn't someone who's 91 not try and use the excuse, oh, I forgot? <laughs> if you don't do that, Bernie, they'll think you're going senile. Ah, clever double bluff. <laughs> Bernie's fortune has shot up in the last few months due to a line in the small print which allows him at the end of each Grand Prix to siphon off any leftover petrol. <laughs> this comes only a month after Bernie said he'd happily take a bullet for Vladimir Putin. A kind offer, though it's only going to be helpful if the sniper's aiming below waist level. <laughs> the UK has experienced a heat wave this week. Please watch out for those dangers on the beach, sunstroke, jellyfish and the resurgence of the male thong. <laughs> I always wear Factor 50 after a distressing experience a few summers ago when I picked up a tan so quickly that coming back from the beach I was stopped and searched twice. <laughs> At one point the heat wave even reached Scotland, giving them the highest temperature since records began. The Met Office confirmed Falkirk reached highs of 12 degrees. <laughs> Leet's confidential emails from Uber have revealed the extent of their ruthless business practices. The Uber leaks came as quite a surprise, as they were actually expected two weeks ago, then one week ago, then any moment, and then suddenly five weeks ago. <laughs> Uber faced hostility from rivals on both sides. Black cabbies were worried they were stealing their fares. Minicab drivers were worried they were stealing their sexual assault victims. <laughs> and that's your weekly roundup. Time to get on with the show. Of course, no panel show is complete without panellists, so first let's meet the teams. Fighting for the left is a team captain who is so ginger she spent the last seven days chin deep in a horse trough of Factor 90. It's Diane Spencer. <laughs> and her teammate is a comedian called Josh Howie, as in, we don't know how he keeps being asked back. It's Josh Howie. <laughs> Fighting for the right is a team captain whose name is just one letter short of being an anagram for asshole. It's Leo Curse. <laughs> and Leo is joined by a comedian whose appearances on this show are always followed by a flurry of tweets. If you want to avoid a ban, always be sure to replace the U or the N with an asterisk. It's Nick Dixon. <laughs> So here at the Ministry of Offence, we ask our teams to tell us which minister they would like to be. Leo, I'm going to start with you and your team. What are you the minister of? Uh, this week I'm going to be the minister of paedophilia. <laughs> it's, it's been a big week for paedophilia. We've had Tim Westwood, the BBC DJ, uh, being accused of having sex with a 14-year-old. The other big news in paedophilia this week has been the Telford scandal. The inquiry has, has revealed uh, you know, the horrible Telford scandal. You won't, you won't hear the left mention it because they're worried about looking racist. Uh, but on the right, luckily, we have no such concerns. Um, I don't mind getting cancelled. But yeah, we're, we're also going to update the old xenophobic saying, uh, which is, you know, they come over here, they take our jobs. It's appalling. We've got homegrown British paedophiles who've invested in vans and trench coats and boxes of puppies and they're being put out of paedophilia by, by new arrivals. It's, it's horrific. And some of our top paedophiles are having to go overseas. We've lost Gary Glitter. Uh, other people have had to go to Epstein's Island. We need to, we need to bring it back. Fair enough. Um, Nick? 
Yes, I'm the minister for Leo's last ever TV appearance. <laughs> <laughs> Just stunned. I'm just stunned. <laughs> I just like to say, since it's a political show, I disavow everything that was said there and distance myself from Leo. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a centrist now. I'm the minister for equality, but because I'm on the right wing team, I'm against it. Uh, <laughs> the rich should get richer, guys. White privilege. Come on. Woo. That's my position. Thank you. And moving over to this team, Diane, what are you the minister of? I am the Minister of Sophisticated Commitment Videos because I think we've all learned in the news recently why actually do what you set out to say you're going to do when you can just make a video about it. So now, you know, children at school, they don't have to sit exams. They just have to do a video on TikTok that's very glossy, telling everybody, I'm going to pass my exams and you can trust me, I'm going to do really well. <laughs> we need to have a country where we believe in truth, honesty, and integrity and where else can we get that except glossy sophisticated commitment videos <laughs> and Josh uh, I am the Minister for school holidays our ministry is based very far away from Leo's ministry uh, <laughs> For various reasons. Uh, it's because, yeah, my, my, my children, their uh, summer holidays start uh, on Thursday, and I'm very much looking forward to spending some quality time with them. Uh, unfortunately, this is the busiest time of year for the Minister of School Holidays, so I'm going to actually have to spend my whole time working um, in the ministry, <laughs> aka my shed, until September 3rd. <laughs> Now that's the introductions out of the way, let's get this show started with our first round, which is Viral Load. Each week the teams pick a video that has caught their eye. It could be political, it could just be something that they find weird or amusing. I will decide which video is more point worthy. Okay, well Diane, what have you got for us? Oh, well, I have got Suella Braverman showing us that she's got the decisive mind that's needed to lead the Tories, even though at the time of recording, I already know she's out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take a look. You just said you, you take public money Therefore, the public ought to know where its money is going. Who are the members? It's, it's all on the public record, uh, and people are, uh, are able to uh, disclose their name. Uh, I've told you... Where I'm can not we going see the list? That the, ...the members of the European Research Group are um, a group of MPs who support the government's mm. agenda in delivering... Uh, but where can we see the list of members? Um, the, the list of members is uh, kept by the European Research Group. So where can we see it? The people who pay for it? that it's available if, if necessary. <laughs> wow. And that clip went on for another three hours. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what you've got to remember is this is not a high-pressured situation. This interview actually happens in 2017. So you are looking at a woman who has never heard of COVID-19. She has never experienced a lockdown. She has no idea that Russia is going to invade Ukraine again, and she has never heard the term Wagatha Christie. <laughs> <laughs> and despite her living in this blissful state, she is so flummoxed by this question. Um, well, I think I, I think I... That's exactly what I'm like when I was at school and I had to tell people I had a girlfriend. And I was like, yeah, well, where is she? Oh, she's uh, Australia. And uh, can you bring her out? Yes. Yeah, but what's her get, name? Get a letter. Oh, her name is... Uh, her name is available. Yeah, her name is uh, <laughs> upon request. She will call you, whatever. But I, watching that video, I'm starting to suspect that she doesn't have that list. <gasps> I, I, can I just chip in? Because I'm kind of disgusted by the left wing's attempt to smear a woman of colour, number one. And, uh, <laughs> I'm, I find Nick, we don't even see colour, mate. I didn't even know she was a woman of yes, colour. But Nick's got a point, because the, <laughs> left, you. the left, they focus on identity politics so much, but the Tories have got the most ethnically diverse cabinet in British history, yeah. showing that, you know, uh, ethnicity is no barrier to forming a terrible government. But why should she give up the name? It's the ER ERG is a private... It's a private club, like the, the ones Leo goes to in Soho. It's private. <laughs> it's the funded by taxpayers' money that I think Krishnan Guru Murthy had an issue with. And I would not like to sit opposite that man at a bar, because he'd be like, why haven't you drunk it yet? Why haven't you drunk it yet? Yeah, but it's still there. Drink it. Like, oh, I think he would get anybody kind blasted. Are you saying he's a kind of, of uh... <laughs> 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 no, I was... That's what I thought she meant. 
The incel went to Rohypnol. Uh, I'm not an incel. I have had girlfriends in the yeah. past. You described yourself uh, yeah, as an XL. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Uh -oh. You know, I've, had, I've had very hot girlfriends. Why is this the subject? <laughs> Why is this on the telly? So you see attractiveness, do you? Of course. Oh, on the right wing. We're Luckily. looking for ultra-high beauty standards. Have you, you're not familiar with the Aryan race, Josh. Where have you been? <laughs> Oh, that's too far. <laughs> that was a left. The Nazis Pe were left. Pedophiles, wing. Aryans, you're really going for it this week, guys. <laughs> they were national socialists. You're, the Nazis were left wing. Okay. Anyway, um, <laughs> carry on. I I'm just glad Nick's taking some of the heat off me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I didn't come out pro pedophile. That's the only difference. <laughs> yeah, you guys are nailing it. <laughs> Saying I'm anti-Nazi, I think I want to make that clear. Right. We're anti-Nazi and anti-pedophile. Good. <laughs> no, <laughs> there's not many game shows where the panel just have to reaffirm that point, by the way. <laughs> well, it says in my auto cue, OK, moving on. And I've, never been, I've never been so grateful for that phrase. OK, moving on, uh, on to our next video. This one's yours, Nick. What's caught your eye this week? Oh, yes, thanks for asking, Steve. Uh, this is a very important video that could save your life. Let's take a look. So there's been a nuclear attack. Don't ask me how or why, just know that the big one has hit, okay? So what do we do? There are three important steps that I want you to remember. Step one, get inside fast. Step two, stay inside. Shut all doors and windows. Step three, stay tuned. Follow media for more information. Don't forget to sign up for Notify NYC for official alerts and updates. And don't go outside until officials say it's safe. All right, you've got this. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> stay inside and watch TV. It's how I live my life anyway. Yeah, yeah I'm reassured. I don't know about you. It's... Uh, very weird video, isn't it? From the start, I don't like when she goes, uh, don't ask me how or why. Okay, we've got the plans. You don't need to know. It's very weird. She doesn't tell you how. Unless it's like Joe Biden has just pressed the button by accident or something. I don't know if that's... <laughs> and then at the end, she goes, um, you've got this. That's my favorite bit. It's like, you go, girl. <laughs> yes, queen. Do you know what I mean? It's the, it's, it's the nuclear apocalypse. Get your hazmat suit and start eating that roadkill. You've got it. You know what I mean? <laughs> there'll be another one coming out in Texas where they'll be like, now make sure you've got your guns and your bullets. Don't you worry about food and water. If you've got guns and bullets, you can get the food and water later on. <laughs> 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 She's also like, it's like, don't go outside until officials say it's safe in 30,000 years' time. <laughs> it's, it's like, because we had warning things broadcast in the 80s when the Chernobyl cloud came over. I don't know if you remember this, but it came right over Scotland. We had uh, adverts on TV and on the radio saying, uh, like, don't drink rainwater. And it just showed, <laughs> just showed what the English government thought of Scottish people. <laughs> Uh, that's ridiculous. We've got taps. We're not, we're not just running around on all fours naked, <laughs> drinking from puddles, you know? OK, I think the most point-worthy video is Nick's nuclear warning. Ah! Oh. Moving on now to the next round, which is clickbait. Yes, in this round we give each of our teams some news stories and task them to come up with some headlines. In true tabloid style, these headlines need to be funny, punny or downright sensational. Basically anything that's going to draw you in as clickbait. We're going to start with this story. There was a leak in the House of Commons this week, only this time it came from the ceiling. Parliament staff hurriedly placed buckets and blankets near the green benches. Monday afternoon session was delayed by an hour due to water pouring down on the MPs. Thoughts on that one? Well, my first thought is I thought they would just have the ruddy thing refurbished or it's in the middle of refurbishment. It's costing, I think, £22 billion pounds to refurbish that place over 76 years, which actually is exactly the same amount of money that the Kingdom of Qatar are going to funnel to Charles in carrier bags. <laughs> <laughs> I would go with Parliament full of drips. <laughs> Freak, leak, reek, speak. <laughs> are you playing a different word game? Are you, on, uh, are you playing mallet's mallet right now? Just 
trying to rhyme some stuff. OK. Um, any thoughts over here? I've got Boris Kicks Bucket. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Douse of Commons. Douse because it's what? Fine. You Whatever. Oh. Whatever. Or you could have said Douse of Wetminster. Oh, yes! Westminster! <laughs> and as the, as the pedant, it's the Palace of Westminster and the Houses of Parliament. Sorry, so. Steve. <laughs> Thanks. 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 We have to deduct points. Let's make sure there's no fun here, how guys. Come, um, how come there's a leak in there anyway? It hasn't rained in a very Oh, it's because <laughs> 12 um, months. They're so out of touch, they've managed to have a leak in a heat wave. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's the elites, guys. They're making their own weather. The elites. Nice. All right, we'll move on to the next one. Police have broken up a fake version of India's Premier League cricket set up to scam Russian gamblers. Con men hired Farmers Field, had labourers posing as fake teams and used crowd sound effects as it was live streamed on YouTube. Any thoughts on that? How about fake cricket actually more exciting than real thing? <laughs> <laughs> Just some people in a field just pretending to do cricket is better than cricket. Um, Indian bummer. And that made sense at home, like summer, but it's a bummer because it's in... You got any, Leo? <laughs> <laughs> that sounded homophobic. And racist, Indian bummer. It was a mere pun. Yeah. It was a simple pun about an annoying thing happening in India. Amir pun is actually the name of one of the Indian guys. <laughs> <laughs> I do love that about cricket. It's the only sport that they improve by making it shorter. You're right, though. They're always like, they had the five day, and like, let's make it the one day cricket. And it gets more and more exciting. I'm like, you know what would be really exciting? Football. <laughs> <laughs> now, football's not interesting either. The only, the, only sports, the only sports that are interesting are fighting. Because if you notice, if you're at any sporting event, like football, cricket, whatever it is, and a fight breaks out, everybody turns and watches the fight. But if you're at a fight and somebody starts playing keepy uppies, Nobody turns around and watches the person playing keep you uppies. So what does that tell you? It tells me you're in far too many fights. Uh, watching. Oh, okay. Watching. Mm. Never. My face is my money. You're not getting this because of your face. I hate to break it to you. Really? It's your um, witty uh, racist puns. I mean, right now, I think it might be the face. <laughs> <laughs> Over here, can you, have you got any headlines for us? I would go with Russian gamblers stumped. <laughs> Or Russian gambling turns to ashes. Oh. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if you know much about Indian cricket, but this is probably the most honest game of Indian cricket. <laughs> 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 well done, some great ones there, but there can only be one winner to that round. And for this one, it's the blue team. Oh. <laughs> no. One more year. It's time for a break now, so go and rehydrate. As with this heat wave, I suspect you two might be sweating like Tim Westwood at a high school musical audition, allegedly. See you after this. I'm Mark Dolan. Join me at 11 on GB News for Headliners, in which I'll be joined by two of the UK's top comedians discussing tomorrow's papers. If it's an important story, we'll cover it but we'll have some fun along the way. Headliners, the late night paper review that won't send you to sleep like the others will. Seven nights a week at 11 p.m. on GB News. <laughs> Welcome back to Ministry of Offence in a week where the Met Office issued an amber warning because it's so hot you might in the bed. <laughs> We're still here with Leo Kirst, Josh Howey, uh, Diane Spencer and Nick Dixon and it's time for our next round, Masturbate. In this round, we discuss the biggest news story of the week, which is, of course, the Tory leadership contest. We saw every Tom, Dick and Suella throw their hat in the ring and a knife in Boris's back. But our teams think there are better options out there, and they're going to put forward candidates that they think should take charge of the country. Diane, I'm coming to you first. Who would you like to endorse as the new Tory leader? None other than Prince Harry. OK, let's remind ourselves of Harry in action. The UK is my home and a place that I love. That will never change. I have grown up feeling supported from so many of you, and I watched as you welcomed Meghan with open arms, as you, as you saw me find the love and happiness that I had hoped for all my life. 
Finally, the second son of Diana got hitched. Hooray. Take it away. Well, let me explain to you why a ginger should be on top. <laughs> Prince Harry should definitely become our next Prime Minister because he's in a lot of trouble with Netflix, uh, Spotify, his book publishers, because he's produced no content whatsoever. But if he becomes Prime Minister, he can then do like a Yes Prime Minister on Netflix. Also, it's important that Harry moves into number 10 because being married to an outlandish American, I think she's the only other person in the UK who can live with Carrie's choice of wallpaper. <laughs> Rebuttals? Mm, any questions? I, I like that video when um, Harry said, you welcomed Meghan with open arms, <laughs> and the next sentence which should have been, until you realise what she was like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you think it's good that there's going to be some continuity? Because Boris doesn't know who his kids are, and Harry isn't totally sure who his dad is. <laughs> now that has been heavily disproved. This is just gingerism. You think that Prince Harry doesn't belong in the royal line because he's a ginger. Yeah. And this is a form of discrimination. Dis yeah. This See, gingers can't even say the word. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's over to the blue team. Leo, who would you like to see leading the Conservative Party? We have a Grant Shapps who used to be a sort of pseudo-con man who ran a pyramid scheme under a fake name. He called himself Michael Green. Uh, there's Nadine Zahawi, who was investigated by the National Crime Agency. Uh, and there's Rishi Sunak, who uh, up until recently was actually domiciled. He had a green card, so he was eligible for paying tax in America. Uh, but not in the UK, uh, even though he wanted us to pay our tax here. So I am suggesting my candidate for the Tory party leadership is Pablo Escobar. <laughs> now, you know, I know there are some issues with Pablo Escobar being the next prime minister. I mean, he's dead for a start, but <laughs> there are some advantages. There'll be, there'll be fewer blunders. Um, I, think, I think a dead government uh, will, will get in our way a lot less. It'll pa pass a lot less uh, terrible legislation. Uh, he'd be incredibly popular at the G7. Just uh, put, give him a seat near the toilets and everybody going in will come out with fantastic policy. We'll, we'll speed up the development <laughs> of policy. Uh, with his supply lines, we'll get more respect from the US. It would become much more of a special relationship. Um, we'd bring back cash. He loved dealing with, with cash. He'd, be, uh, he'd speed up P Prime Minister's questions a bit more because uh, nobody would be wanting to disagree with them in case their car got blown up. Um, he'd do for our economy what he did for his home city of Medellin. Uh, there he is there, Pablo Escobar. He looks, looks like a real cheapy, cheeky chappy there. Looks like he could be like a young Fred West. I, like, <laughs> lovely grin. Lovely. It, looks like, it looks like you've got the same shirt. Although I don't have numbers across the front. Yes. Um, <laughs> Beautiful. Well, well done. Now it's over to the red team. Josh, who are you nominating? Well, I, I mean, uh, in all seriousness, I think I've actually got a pretty good candidate here because um, he went to a uh, fee paying school. He lives in a you know, million pound house. He's part of the elite. You know, he's, he's going to fit right in. Uh, it's Jeremy Corbyn. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's take a look at the man. <laughs> I personally think this is actually a, a fantastic idea for a Tory leader. Number one, he's a Brexiteer. He, he will get Brexit done. <laughs> yeah. Uh, number two, uh, well, he's, he's available. He doesn't have the Labour whip anymore, so there's no reason why he can't go over to the Tories. He's going to be a massive hit with the anti-Semites on the right. And uh, the main reason that I think that he would be a fantastic Tory leader is because he has already ensured two Tory victories. <laughs> <laughs> Well done, and now it's over to the blue team. Nick, who are you backing for the Tory leader? Ah, well, I'm backing someone who, I mean, technically has said he's not running, but I think he should because he's a man of the people, perhaps even more in touch with the working class than Rishi Sunak, and hopefully we have a video. The Brexit Opportunities Minister now has to decide who he wants to replace Boris Johnson. He joins us now uh, live. Thank you very much for being uh, on the programme. First things first, it well, feels like pretty much you. everyone in the Conservative Party fancies a crack at the top job. Can you rule yourself out? Well, um, 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 John Lydon, better known as Johnny Rotten, has kindly uh, endorsed me, but he's not a member of the Conservative Party. I was very flattered. Take it away, Nick. What an absolute legend. Well, 
Okay, so as he said there, John Lydon from the Sex Pistols is backing Jacob Rees-Mogg. And this is where we are now as a culture. Because the left are so annoying and have taken over everything and been really annoying, it's now punk to support a multi-millionaire politician from Eton. And that is where we've arrived at. And I live in North London, so when Boris was in trouble, everyone was gloating so much and messaging me. It was so annoying. I just think it'd be so funny if they got rid of Boris and ended up with Mogg. Do you know what I mean? Like, careful what you wish for. Like, you got rid of Boris. Now Mogg comes in like the ghost of Tory past. Do you know what I mean? I just think it'd be because like, oh, you didn't like the bumbling funny guy who was pro-climate stuff. It's like, okay, well now Mog's here, abortion's banned, and the national language is Latin, all right? <laughs> That's where we're taking it. The motor car's gone, caning is back in schools. You know, the penny farthing is back. Even, like, even his children are in Latin. One of them's called Sixtus. Do you know what I mean? Sixtus Dominic Boniface Christopher Reese Mogg. What an absolute ledge. And on a, on a very, very, very serious level, he, he, to me, Mog represents everything great about Englishness. Uh, impeccable manners, high standards, fairness, always very fair about all his rivals and colleagues. Uh, he believes in the small state and the individual. Plus, at 53 years old, he still has a nanny, which I think is absolutely baller. <laughs> when someone even said to him, they said to him, uh, what, about, what about this accusation, Jacob, that you've never changed a nappy? He just said, nanny does it brilliantly. <laughs> How can you top that? Why is he still wearing nappies? <laughs> fair enough. Any questions? I've seen how he behaves in the Houses of Commons. He would just spend all his time lying down on the job. Mm -hmm. That's a tradition that has always been in the House of Commons. <laughs> that lying down, that's just what he's always done. And that was always, because they're in there for ages and it's really boring. He just sounds like a Victorian tax inspector telling off orphans for being hungry. <laughs> I, I love his voice. I think everyone should speak like that. And under Jacob Rees-Mogg's rule, they will. Well, you all make some very good points, but ultimately it's up to me to decide who did the best pitch for the next Tory leader. And I think the most compelling argument came from Nick. So Thanks. the points go to the blue team. <laughs> now we've sorted out the new leader. Let's move on to our next round, which is lie detector. Our teams are shown some newspaper stories from this week and they must decide which parts of each story are true and which are false. So it's fingers on buzzers, can you spot the lie in this first story? Nuns from the Order, founded by Mother Teresa, have been welcomed to Nicaragua as a show of goodwill to the Catholic Church. The Vatican has been highly critical of the country's human rights record, but President Daniel Ortega now says members of the church are saints in cassocks. What could the lie be in there? President Daniel Ortega is actually sponsoring um, the first Nicaraguan nuns bobsledging team and they're going to make a film about it and it's going to be called Cool Nunnings. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't saints like pretty much meant to be in cassocks? Like saints in isn't it like you say, oh, saints in astronaut suits or saints in football kits would be like a thing that made sense. <laughs> saints in cassocks, just like saying, right? That's what they're meant to be. I, I, I thought you can be, you know, beatified or whatever it is um, without being... You just put, you need to perform a miracle. Is it that they're trying to get rid of the nuns? Is the correct answer. The nuns have been kicked out of Nicaragua after the government <laughs> fell out of the Catholic Church. They called them devils in cassocks. Uh, devils in cassocks sounds a bit like the hors d'oeuvres my mum used to serve in the 70s. <laughs> okay, everyone, fingers on buzzers. Here comes our next lie-laden story. Scientists are planning to get rid of Britain's grey squirrels by introducing specially trained birds of prey to kill them. The aim is to eradicate the squirrels, which destroy trees and have uh, pushed native red squirrels onto the brink of extinction in the UK. Yes, uh, this is a lie. I don't believe this country would do anything serious to tackle immigration. <laughs> I think it's very dangerous to in introduce a lot of another species to wipe out an existing species. So I reckon they're going to try and sabotage the squirrels by making like a super lardy fat ball so that all the grey squirrels get morbidly obese and then they can't outrun natural predators like foxes and they can't climb the trees to get back home because like, oh, that fat ball was amazing, but now I can't climb the tree. And then if... <laughs> Where's that squirrel from? <laughs> and then when they try and have sex with each other or with grey squirrels, like, no, you go on top, no, you go on top, oh, I can't do it, we are too fat. And then they'll die out. Almost word for word for what's on the card. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding, no. <laughs> uh, I, is, is it, are they giving the squirrels really tiny little condoms? 
<laughs> it's um, <laughs> so close that I think you might have to get the points for that. Yeah. Say that. They're giving them contraceptive pills, but really tiny ones, squirrel size. Is the correct answer. Um, I can tell you that the, what the scientists are doing is they're getting rid of Britain's grey squirrels by luring them into boxes containing pots of hazelnut spread laced with contraceptives. And that's, um, that's how you met your wife, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> that's why we're only going to have one kid. Um, <laughs> you know, so you put that in Nutella, you'll get rid of teenage pregnancy. Um, it's uh, good news for squirrels as now they can bury their nuts as often as they want to. <laughs> uh, me and Nick, for a contraceptive, we just use our personalities. <laughs> 100% success rate. Yeah. Safe. You We're putting a lot of work into preserving our virginity. <laughs> I love the way we do it as a team as well. I think that's, that's part of the problem, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> We're approaching women together, saying... <laughs> High-fiving each other. So here's your last lie-laden story. Fingers on buzzers for this one. The Church of England says it doesn't have a definition for the word God. The admission came in an official report, with one bishop quoted as saying, the meaning of the word used to be self-evident, but it isn't now. A church project will now explore the so-called complexities of its relationship with God. <laughs> All over the place. I think Josh, yeah. Uh, is it, it's not God, obviously. I think they don't have a definition of the word safeguarding. <laughs> uh, or reporting or whistleblowing but for them it means something different <laughs> I've never had to do this before I need to turn over here for something less offensive <laughs> yeah, it's... are they putting contraceptives and peanut butter and rubbing it on the <laughs> no, um, <laughs> is it... <laughs> it is that the Church of England says it doesn't have a definition for the word woman is the correct answer <laughs> and i am furious why are you furious because the whole oppression of women really starts with religion like we're the ones who make all the bread but do we get any of like the praise no at the very start of the bible god made woman Eve out of another bit of Adam and then Eve eats the apple first and Eve is blamed for everything. You complained about being oppressed as a woman and then admitted that you're in the kitchen making all the bread. <laughs> Typical woman. That is... Uh... <laughs> No, I think, I mean, no, I agree with that. I mean, you know, they should, they should be, if, if, there's, if there's something you want so to be, angry. one organisation you want to be a bit of a stick in the mud and traditional, it's maybe the church. I mean, the church shouldn't be trying to be the new commissioner of comedy on Channel 4. They should be, you know, the church. They've got, like, if they want to know what a woman is, they've got, they got a book that tells them, the Bible. They don't need to update that for 2022. Yeah. Like, they're not changing anything else, but they're just going to change what a woman is. It's us. We get it again. We're the ones who have to change. Can I just check? You are a woman. <laughs> just because there's... Oh, Honestly, <laughs> right now, I am aware. If anybody would like to see what happens when a girl punches someone, I will gladly show you. Well, um, <laughs> yep, I could tell you that's the correct answer. The Church of England says it doesn't have a definition for the word woman. Uh, one bishop was quoted as saying the meaning used to be self evident, but now it isn't. Let's not overthink it, bishops. Women are the ones that you didn't allow to be priests for the first 550 years of the church existing. Simple. So the winner of that round is the red team. We're going to take a break now, but don't worry, just like Boris, it's an illusion and we're going nowhere, really. My name is Andrew Doyle. Join me every Sunday evening at 7pm for Free Speech Nation. This is a show where we address current affairs and news stories of the week with the help of two wonderful comedian panelists. I brought in comics because I want to give it a lighter edge and also they work for less. See you there. Welcome back to Ministry of Offence in a week where an X-ray of Van Gogh's painting Head of a Peasant revealed a hidden self-portrait. This is after an X-ray of his earlier work, Aubergine on Table, revealed what's thought to be the first example of a <laughs> pic. <laughs> We're still here with Leo Kirst, Nick Dixon, Diane Spencer and Josh Howey and it's time for our next round, Anti-Social Media. 
Yes, this is Anti-Social Media, in which we look at online reactions to the biggest news of the week, which is, of course, the Tory leadership contest. Obviously, some have fallen by the wayside, but here are the reactions to the many, many self-appointed candidates. OK, this is for both sides to guess. Here's your first one. Blank wants to captain the ship. The ship is the Titanic. <laughs> I reckon that one. Is it the uh, captain of the Titanic? And this, was, uh, this tweet was actually sent before the Titanic launched. Is it Jacob Rees-Mogg? No, afraid not. Do we have to guess from the current Tory candidates? It's Can we so guess obvious. from anyone? Yes. Who is it? Well, it's got to be Penny Morton because she was a former na military and so it's about ships. OK, well, let's see if you're right. Oh, well done. Yep, it's Penny Morton. Moving on to the next one. Hate to break it to you, but the only place those assets are going is into their corrupted pockets. Blank and the whole UK government is about as trustworthy as backstabby McStabby. <laughs> is, it, uh, is it Nadim Sahawi? Because he's got like a history of building up companies, getting loads and loads and loads of money, and then somehow the company goes bust and everybody loses their job and then he moves on to the next one and he's being investigated isn't he and he's in charge of the nation's finances yeah <laughs> is it him right, isn't it well any other guess he's replying to kiev independent so it's obviously about uh ukraine money or funds or something so um i don't know ben wallace boris johnson someone in the tory cabinet well let's see if you're right it's liz, liz trust oh. yeah because the foreign secretary okay here's your next one the thing that surprises me most about Blank Blank is that I didn't even know that Tolkien characters were eligible to become the British Prime Minister. <laughs> Everyone's in on this. Rishi Sunak, oh. he's tiny. <laughs> I'm in. He's tiny. He's like he's, a hobby, yeah. He lives in a little shoebox. <laughs> <laughs> the thing but about he's Rishi... He's blew not... him out with a bit of cheese. <laughs> yeah. I think Leo's been a bit heightist as one because Leo's like circus freak tall, but but like but Rishi, it's not just that he's small in height; he's just miniature in all dimensions, isn't it? It looks like he's far away. He's, shr he's shrunk it. down, and that's that's how he that's how he can stab people in the back so well. They don't realise <laughs> he's getting in behind them till it's too late. Yeah, any other thoughts over here? Uh, it's got to be Jacob Reese Smog. Sort of as a sort of, ah, oh, you must go back to work. <laughs> Get back to your desk. I think it's Tom Tuggan, Tuggan Holt. Doing what, sorry? Tom Tug Tuggan Hat. Tuggan Hat. Tuggan Holt? Tuggan Hat. Tuggan Hat. I think it's Tom Tuggan Hat because that is blatantly a hobbit's name. <laughs> Let's take a look. Hey! Yes! Very good. <laughs> OK, here's your next one. Blank as Prime Minister is a bit like having Harold Shipman as Minister for Pensioners. <laughs> Go on then. It's got to be. It's got to be Rishi because he's killed the former prime minister. So it's like saying how Shipman kills people. Is the only one that makes sense. Well, I don't know if that's the reasoning, but let's take a look. Oh yeah. wow! Yeah. And also because uh, Rishi Sunak has actually killed 250 prime ministers, <laughs> and it's only just revealed from looking at the medical records of various uh, houses of parliament. Okay, here's your next one. Blank is what you get if you put Chucky's brain in a cabbage patch kit. <laughs> Uh, Everyone's a, a horrific birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> that has blatantly got to be Michael Gove because he's got like the doll cheeks and with his like weird, now I'm going to do a voice. Like it has to be him because he's straight out of a horror film. <laughs> it's either Nadine Doris because people just say mean things about it or it's Liz Truss because I don't want to be rude, but they're saying she looks like that. No, it's Michael Gove. OK, well, let's take a look. Oh. oh! Suella? Suella. No. Wow. I, I don't see that. I don't, like, because that's sort of implying that she's some kind of mad psychopath wielding a knife. I could imagine Michael Gove doing that. <laughs> Suella's a good woman and she would have delivered Brexit. Has it not been delivered? Eh? No, she's the only one that really takes it seriously and now she's out. Is it not been done though? I'm sure someone said... No. Someone claimed that they got Brexit done. They're not there. I got a coin and everything. But this is a tweet from Lord Protector Will Warts and All, which <laughs> must be quite a difficult name uh, to have on Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> OK, here's your next one. Blank is a tricky bastard. Just try spoonerising his name. I think this is 
Nick Dixon. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've thought about it then, because my name famously is oh. Dick Nixon, if you reverse it. And uh, everyone always said that to me at school. Oh, you're Nick. People say, in London, people say to me, oh, your nickname at school must have been Dick Nixon. I'm like, I went to a convention in the North. My nickname was Pufter. Anyway, <laughs> the point is, not even gay, but that's just tough school. The, the thing is, it must be, right? It must be Nick Dixon, because you can't speak about Or, backup choice, Tom Tugendhat, because it's both T's. <laughs> so it's impossible. Let's, oh, yeah. I think he's wrong. I think it's either going to be Jeremy Hunt, because then you get Jeremy Junt, <laughs> or it's going to be Sajid Javid, because try spoonerizing his Savage. Wait, Sajid Javid would be Jajid Savid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with Javid You've done Savid. It now. You'll never be able to Jajid say his name Savid. ever again. You've yeah. I'm going to go with Sushi. Runak. Sushi Runak. It is. I forgot to say the whole reason it's me because Richard Nixon was known as Tricky Dicky, so you switch my name around. Yeah, it's let's Richard talk Nick about you some more, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's the answer. I get abused a lot online. Mm -hmm. Well, let's take a look. Ah! Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's our very own Nick Dixon. And at the end of that round, the winner is the blue team. Four more years. And now it's time for the quick fire round. <laughs> I'll be asking rapid fire questions based on all of the news of this week. Our teams will have to buzz in to be the fastest to answer to gain the point. So it's fingers on buzzers. What did a man from the Isle of Sheppey discover in his fray bentos this week? Had they accidentally put something of nutritional value in there? <laughs> no. Was it a golden ticket to the Frey Bentos factory? I don't know what Frey Bentos is. It's a pie. That's the most oh, southern so posh thing you've ever said. <laughs> no one. I, I can tell you, it was a cow's tooth. Uh, oh. Good source oh of calcium. God. So I was kind of right. Yeah. Because that'll have more nutrition than what's usually in it. I can't believe a like part of a cow was found in a Frey Bentos pie. <laughs> <laughs> What are some long COVID sufferers forking out £40,000 for? Um, it's earplugs to put in their ears for when people go, there's no such thing as long COVID. Is it a new vaccine that works? <laughs> <laughs> They're spending the money to have their blood washed abroad, despite no evidence that uh, it's a practice that's helpful. How do you wash blood? There is evidence. But how do you wash blood? Uh, you put it through a dialysis machine. Oh, right. I thought, like, just put it in, like, the dishes. It's fairy liquid and then start it around. But then how do you get the fairy liquid out? It's like, well, you know what it's like? You know when they put moisturiser in shower gel? You ever get moisturising shower gel? And it's like, well, why are you putting it in the shower gel? That's like, it's going to either get washed off or the soap's going to stay on me. That's like putting toothpaste in ice cream. Uh, what type of adverts have been banned in the UK? Some sort of gambling. Oh, yes! It is close to gambling. Um, it's online gambling. No. Cockfighting. Mm. <laughs> Again, almost. Um, it's dating ads, um, yeah. which uh, offer the chance to meet lonely <laughs> Ukrainian women. The Advertising Standards Authority deemed it unacceptable and seriously offensive. Mm. Uh, I don't know where you're meant to go now if you want to try and find lonely Ukrainian women. Um, where has the world's oldest brain been found? In the world's oldest head. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Joe Biden's brain? <laughs> <laughs> It's in the remains of a 506 million year old three-eyed prawn. Ah, the old three-eyed oh. prawn. It's Joe Biden. And that, uh, the prawn was also found in a Frey Bentos pie as well. Um, <laughs> what has sparked outrage at the front of a Glaswegian church? Yeah. Salad. No, I know this. It's someone actually practicing Christianity. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? It's a straight pride poster featuring a cartoon image of a man and a woman with three children inscribed with the words, because you wouldn't be here without normal people. Ah. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't even know any of our posters had reached Glasgow. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, what have authorities in Iran announced July the 12th as? Is it Women Are Allowed to Speak Day? <laughs> Pancake Day? <laughs> no. <laughs> Gay Pride? Hijab uh. and Chastity Day. How's that different from normal? Well, that's, that's be good to get it done in a day, and then boom, back to the hairy sex. <laughs> uh, what did First Lady Jill Biden compare Latinos to this week? As uh, you know, there's tacos. It's the Re correct answer. And you know what? Breakfast tacos. It's, it's a pretty good comparison, because they're yummy. Have you eaten many? <laughs> <laughs> when in Mexico. Okay. <laughs> 
What is the latest global company to shut its stores in Russia? Zelensky's gun shops. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's a good chain, that. Hugo Boss. They're not going to make uniforms for anyone. I'm sure they would. Uh, no, it's, it's Lego. Oh. oh! That'll hurt them, won't it? Um, <laughs> they must be bricking it. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Who's landed a job teaching sports science in prison? I reckon this is Boris Becker, because he was the tennis guy and he's now in prison. Please tell me it's correct. Is the correct answer? Yes! <laughs> Um, according to experts, what is the impact of regularly attending religious services? <laughs> Heaven. <laughs> uh, sadly, there's no proof of that, so we can't have Yeah, one. you become a better person with good opinions. Sorry, I'm no. just giving the, am I the only question here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You apparent. radiate smugness and try to tell everybody else what they should do with their lives? No, anyone else? It's a longer life and less interest in smoking, drinking and taking drugs. So basically what I said. That sounds like they're trying to put you off. <laughs> um, what did Boris Johnson call Keir Starmer at Prime Minister's Questions this week? Captain Crasher Rooney Snooze Fest. It's the correct answer. <laughs> Boom. And that's the end of the quickfire round. The winners are the red team. And that means that, sadly, we've also reached the end of the show. I can reveal that the overall winners this week is the blue team. Four more years. Four more years. I'm on strike. So the winners, your prize is that you get to look through NASA's new James Webb Space Telescope. And the losers, you won't be going away empty-handed. You get to look through Leo's hard drive. <laughs> Thanks to our team captains, Leo Kirsten, and Diane Spencer. And to our guests this week, Nick Dixon and Josh Howey. I've been your host, Stephen Allen, and we'll be back at the same time next week. See you then.